Hello, how's it going? So I've just got back from going to see Mike and Mike's electric stuff. Mike is an electrical engineer, an all-round professional electrical problem-solving professional mastermind. That's a pretty long job description. He's already had a long and diverse career making all sorts of things. He showed me his show wall, which is basically full of a load of the kind of prototypes and test parts for a load of really big uh, lighting and LED sculptures and things like that for various clients and stuff. Obviously the sculptures are way, way bigger. The reason I went over to go and see Mike today was to go and drop something off for him to do a teardown video on. And if you haven't seen his YouTube channel before, well, the link is below. However, the other reason I popped over was for something else entirely. This is the subject of one of Mike's latest teardown videos. This machine's function is pretty mundane and on its own, it isn't really worth doing any videos on it for any reason. However, the way it does it is really, 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 quite strange. Well, what is this thing? It's a mid-1980s Soviet Russian phone number auto dialer. It has the ability to store 40 numbers in it and then when you press the button, well, it auto dials that number. Well, the interesting thing is how it stores the phone number. And the way it does it is underneath this panel, which is extremely awkward to get off. Hey. What the deuce? I know what you're thinking. It looks like a bit of a game of weird Connect 4 or Battleships. Well, this is actually an array of 4x7 uh, magnetic cores. Now, remember, this is designed to store 40 telephone numbers. But how the heck does it do it with this? Now, I'm not going to really cover the technicals on this, as Mike has already done that. Uh, so if you want to pause this video, maybe go over and watch Mike's one, and then come back, and we're actually going to go and try it. So how do you program the numbers in? to this well what you do is you get a wire uh, you plug the end of it into this one which actually says number one poke that into there and then what we do is we put it here and then this is the first number what we need to do is decipher whether we want the number to be either a one two three four five six seven eight nine or zero or the uh, stop command I think that's rest so let's say if we want the first number to be a zero, we actually put it all the way through the middle of these uh, magnetic cores and then skip this one and put it over here like that. And then we go for another number. Let's go for one. One goes like this. So we need to put it through every single core except for this one. <laughs> oh my God, this is amazing. That's one. Uh, so, oh, one. Let's try and do. Uh, oh, I did zero wrong. Oh, I've done a rest at the start. I've, I've messed it up already. In the mid 80s in Soviet Russia, maybe uh, microprocessors and things like that were quite a lot more expensive than doing something like this. You may be like, well, why don't they put a bunch of dip switches in there? But imagine 40 sets of eight dip switches to get all of the eight numbers in there it would actually, even that would be more expensive than doing it this way. Funnily enough, if you think about it, with what was available at the time, potentially this wasn't that crazy of an idea. When this thing came out, this method of storing data was nothing new. It had been used for decades before to store uh, programs in computers. Heck, it even helped get that tin can with people in it to the moon. But the thing that's really interesting about this is this is a domestic item. It's the sort of thing you would go down to probably an electronic shop. I've just spoke to a telecom engineer friend called Chris and he has uh, mentioned a few things that actually might make a little bit more sense. This probably isn't domestic. It's actually made, probably made for small businesses. There's also a page in the manual that we translated and it talks about a service that costs 180 rubles that could potentially be the setup service for this for putting all the numbers in here and then giving it to the to said to said whoever needs it we need to uh, take it apart really quickly to put in a mains cable It would be rude not to at least have a look under the hood. Mike did not have the power connector for this, uh, so we'll have to figure out an alternative. Uh, it's really quite interesting actually because the power connector goes in over the top and then a fuse is sandwiched between uh, the power connector and this. In the mid 80s, Soviet Russia was running on pole style, so this would need a converter to work on a modern kind of uh, telephone line. But it just so happens I've got a pole style telephone exchange, 
So I've got some numbers from around the museum that I'm going to program into it and we're going to try and call them up with this. Let's set up number one as Tecmoan. So I need to do number five uh, for the first number. Through number one, not through number two or three, through number four. This is basically the space race in the comfort of your 1980s home. Five, seven, seven, seven. Five, seven, seven, seven. Trying to program all 40 numbers would literally take all day. Uh, there we go, uh, two and then zero. And then I think because that's the whole number, what I need to do with the next two is this last one. Somebody definitely can read that. What does that say? Is that rest? So programming one number took five minutes. I'm starting to think that just dialing the phone number would have been easier. I can't see how 40 wires uh, would even fit unless there were extremely thin wires. So I've managed to program seven numbers in total. My gosh, that took about half an hour to do. It got a little bit quicker by the end, but I did make a couple of stupid mistakes as I went along. When I finished one, I tested it and listened to the relay inside it because it makes a tiny little noise as you heard earlier, just to see if it works. And I think I've done them all correctly. Annoyingly enough, I've only just realized right at the end of it that this ferrite core doesn't seem to be working. So this one at the top actually sends out gobbledygook, whatever you put into it. And you bet your bottom dealer I'm not gonna fix that now because that would mean I have to undo all of these, take it off, fix it and put it back together. Right, now let's go and plug this in and see if it actually does what it says on the tin. As the manual says, you wire it in parallel with a phone, which is what I've done. So let's uh, push a button and see what happens. Oh, oh no. Oh, try that one more time. Ooh. Ooh. This, the code you have dialed is no longer available. Please redial your number using the full STD code as shown in your phone book. No. There will be no extra charge to the call. If further assistance is required, please ring operator services. It bloody works. Hello? If further assistance is required, please ring operate services. So that's it for now on this Soviet relic. It turned out to actually be pretty unreliable. Most of the calls that I tried didn't actually go through. And that's probably down to the differences in Soviet telephone standards and, you know, UK stuff, which is what my stuff was trying to talk to this being. But it was enough to give it a go and see how it worked. Because it says in the manual to wire it in parallel to the phone, it makes the bell go dingly, dingly, dingly every time this tries to call. Which might be a different case if we're plugging this into the Russian phone line with a Russian phone. Who knows? If you've got more information about this, then please comment below. You can download the backing songs for this video. The links to both of them are available below. They're on Patreon. So if you want to support these videos and get loads of extra content, then go and check it out over there. I'm currently putting the next video together on Builders live streams, and that is a super simple MIDI keyboard. You'll see it in the next video anyway. You'll be able to come and see this auto dialer at this museum's not obsolete when it's open for the next season. Anyway, that's it. I've been Luke Mumno Computer. Don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it.